welcome back to the physics class dear students so we were discussing about the phase difference and the path difference in the previous class right i just have written one wave and i show you how the time period varies along all the points of the wave and how the phase varies at all the points of the wave and even i said you that and even you also studied in our first poc phase chapter so that is what phase exactly gives you the state of vibration of a particle at a particular interval of time that is what at what state that the particle is vibrating is said to be the phase then what is mean by phase so why because i am discussing about this phase and all because we should know the phase difference and also the path difference even we should know the relationship present between the phase difference and the path difference so that which helps us to understand clearly the ends double slit interference pattern and also it helps us to discuss the theory of the ends double slit pattern phase it is a state of a particle it is the state of a vibrating particle it is a state of a vibrating particle so even you have studied about this in your first poc also now with the phase again i just want to move for the discussion of the path difference and the phase difference before going to that let us write the previous wave diagram that what we have done in the previous class so i'm just going to consider it as y is the x axis and this is as the y axis and this is the origin from the origin the wave is just moving out right but i just consider only one cycle why because for only one cycle we can conclude so many terms with the help of one cycle wave that is said to be one vibration right now i am just going to write one complete wave the total time period for one complete wave is t what is the time for this it is t by 2 then what happens here it is t by 4 here it becomes 3 t by 4 right so as i said before in the previous class the time period varies as t n t by 4 0 t by 4 1 2 t by 4 3 t by 4 and 4 t by 4 similarly even you can observe that the pi that is what the phase varies as l pi by 2 so for one complete cycle or one complete wave so that the phase is 2 pi then for off of the wave it becomes pi off of that of wave becomes pi by 2 and then it becomes 3 pi by 2 right my dear students hope you got 0 pi by 2 1 pi by 2 2 pi by 2 3 pi by 2 and 4 pi by 2 that is how we observe that the time period varies as n t by 4 and this pi varies as n pi by 2 so now with this time period and also with this phase we observe that if a particle is vibrating if a particle is vibrating then we can say that for that vibrating particle for that vibrating particle so we have a phases we have <coughs> amplitude we have wavelength we have frequency and also the time period what is meant by amplitude it is a maximum displacement made by the particle so this is the maximum displacement made by the particle said to be amplitude right so again when we come to define amplitude there comes another new term that is what intensity idana matte you study maadi your base chapter alli no need to explain more so but now it is more to what what is a path difference how to say that the phase how to exactly represent the phase dear students phase can be represented 
in the fraction of time period my dear students you can observe that the phase is a fraction of time period t or even it is represented by the fraction of angles we can observe that pi by 2 pi 3 pi by 2 2 pi those are all called as angles whereas t by 4 t by 2 3t by 4 and t they are all called as time period c i can represent the phase of a vibrating particle i can represent the state of a vibrating particle by the fraction of time period in terms of nt by 4 where uh, even i can represent the phase of a vibrating particle in terms of pi by 2 that is what in fraction of angles you can take down one sentence of this diagram hope you have written the diagram in the previous class after this definition take down one sentence that is what the phase is represented as a fraction of time period over a fraction of 2 pi fraction of 2 pi yes dear students then how to say what is a phase angle of a given vibrating particle so you may get the question you may get the question so like i may ask you otherwise i may ask you what is the phase angle of a particle of a part of a vibrating particle when the time period is t by 2 see my dear students at t by 2 the phase angle is pi the fraction of angle is pi so like this we should represent the phase of the phase of a particle and the time period t by 2 is equal to the angle pi is equal to the phase angle pi so this pi is a phase angle 2 pi is a phase angle 3 pi by 2 is a phase angle pi by 2 is a uh, phase angle why because these fraction of angles they are used to represent the phase of a vibrating particle those are used to represent the state of vibrating particle hope you got right similarly even you can take one single line again because now i said at t by 2 the phase angle is pi at t the phase angle is 2 pi so that like that just by observing the figure you can write that sentence also <coughs> so you can see that uh, for example a phase of t by 2 in terms of angle is pi by 2 in terms of angle is pi by 2 yes my dear students again observe carefully see other phase angles and other time periods are given in the figure so now we should know what is path difference and what is phase difference why because if there is a wave if we have an existence of wave if we have the existence of wave then we can exactly say that there is an existence of there is an existence of the phase difference and path difference so as i said you that so there comes with a phase difference and path difference so dear students so you can observe it carefully here so you can observe it carefully so we should know that path difference and phase difference now so what is said to be the phase difference so what is said to be the phase difference see my dear students phase difference is represented by the symbol delta x phase difference is represented by the symbol delta x right sorry delta phi so this is delta phi delta x is path difference this is delta phi delta phi is called as phase difference then what is this difference so phase difference indicates that there is a difference in phase between the two vibrating particles so i'm just writing it it is defined as it is the difference between it is the difference it is the difference right you can observe it carefully it is the difference in phase it is the difference in phase of two vibrating particles So it's 
was clear that it is a difference in the phase of two vibrating particles. Hagadu yaudhara represent maadudu maadu. So definition of the third to difference in phase. Yaudhara madhya eda yen particles vibrate aadudu. Hagadu will get it two waves. So that the difference in the phase of the two vibrating particles is called as phase difference of the head. So I am just going to write here the two waves. I am representing the two waves. Let us name the wave as 1 and let us name the second wave as 2. So these two are the objects for the first wave and also for the second wave. So dear students, you can observe it carefully. So now the particle is going to start in this way. So the first wave is vibrating like this. Right. So it means this is pi to pi. Right. So like this I am just going to write. But you can observe. Another particle is going to vibrate. Right. The other particle is just going to vibrate. In this way. Observe carefully. So otherwise, not clear of the target on that. We can take a dotted lines over here. So you can take a dotted lines over here for each and every phase and you can write the diagram. So E9 line phase here on the lines you have to At lines the dotted lines are not so you can observe. So like the yellow points go to the line by line or the lines go to the line. Right. So now here the wave is going to start at this way. Now the wave is going to start at this way. Observe it. See it is 0 in the start angle. First particle is vibrating from 0 phase angle. But here the second vibrating particle is vibrating from pi by 2. It is vibrating from pi by 2. So it is pi because the wave is here. The wave is here. It can have that. But starting point will be there. 0. Oh, that is what starting point is. It can be like pi by 2. And then first vibrating particle is starting what? The phase angle 0. By the second vibrating particle is vibrating with the phase angle pi by 2. Pi by 2 is the initial phase angle. Here the initial phase angle is 0. Here the initial phase angle is pi by 2. What is the difference? Then what is the difference? Then what is the difference between these two vibrating particles? Pi by 2 minus 0 gives you, gives you pi by 2. So that is what pi by 2 is the phase difference between the two vibrating particles. So that delta phi is equal to pi by 2. So, otherwise you can observe here also. So, it is pi by that. It becomes 2 pi by. Right? Here it is 3 pi by 2. Right. Here it is 3 pi by 2. And here it is 2 pi. 2 pi minus 3 pi by 2 gives you pi by 2 again. Gives you pi by 2. It means the particle is vibrating. The second particle is vibrating with the phase difference of pi by 2 compared to the first particle which is vibrating with initial phase angle 0. So my dear students, keep in your mind. So this is how to just differentiate the phase angle between the two vibrating particles. So now let us move at the path difference. Now let us move at the path difference. So path difference, it is, it is the difference in path, it is the difference in path between two waves, path between two waves. So how to represent this? See my dear students, see my dear students, you can answer that, you can answer, I am just going to consider two sources here. So this is set to be first source S1. This is set to be second source S2. Observe that the first source is vibrating. So it is going to produce wave. So that it is traveling in this way to the point P. Assume that it is not the error source. The error source is going to light waves to produce one of them. Right? So how do you do that? Our light waves are in each other, point P in each other. Similarly, 
the cells the S2 is also going to produce the waves which are again we are going to reach the point P. But here the question is we should calculate the path difference. The path difference is the difference between the path between the two waves. Here we have the two waves S1P and S2P. Observe carefully the waves coming from S1 reaches the point P as soon as the waves which are coming from the source S2. Why? Because here it has to cover the larger distance compared to that of S1P. S1P is a smaller distance compared to that of S1P. So the wave coming from the source S1 has to cover a less distance but the so wave coming from the source S2 has to cover the larger distance. It means source S2 has to travel a longer distance compared to that of S1. Then what is the path difference? So I am just going to write this. So you can observe now. So this perpendicular, I am just going to draw the perpendicular from the source S1 to the line S2P so that here I got another one point Q. So now my dear students, this is said to be the, this is said to be the path difference. This is said to be the path difference. Then how to calculate the path difference? S2P minus S1P gives you the path difference. Therefore, delta X is equal to S2P minus S1P gives you the path difference. Hope you are getting it. So S1, S1 has to travel a very larger distance, sorry, very small distance to P compared to that of S2. So that <coughs> S2P minus S1P gives you the path difference. What is the path difference? This is exactly gives you the path difference. S to the in that against to path difference that E L to wave compared to that. This is the path difference present. Then, then there is a relationship between the path difference delta x and the phase difference delta y. Let us observe the relationship between the path difference and the phase difference. We can take down the idea the relationship between the path difference and the phase difference. Relationship between path difference and phase difference. Path difference and phase difference. Then how to get the relationship? So this is a path difference, no problem. Then how to get it out the difference exactly? That is what how to get a relationship between these two differences. My dear students, there is a direct formula to write. Just you remember that formula for your examination. No need of derivation in law. That is what the phase difference delta pi can be written as 2 pi divided by lambda into delta x. When the delta phi is called as the phase difference, delta x is called as the path difference. Lambda is called as the wavelength. You can write it as wave. Delta phi is called the phase difference and the delta x is said to be the path difference and lambda is said to be the wavelength. So this is the relationship between delta x and delta y. Seriousness, these are all the important concepts that you should know before going towards the discussion of Ang's double set experiment and also before going towards the discussion of the interference theory of interference pattern. Now I am just moving towards the one of the best one of the best phenomena that is said to be the interference of light. Dear students, before going towards interference, interference indicates that there is some superposition. Interference indicates you that there is a superposition. Then rather than saying the superposition, my dear students, so let us define what is the superposition principle of waves. So I am just going to this define you the superposition with the help of two different diagrams. Right. See you can observe, observe that I have the two waves. Okay. The displacement of this wave is considered as y1 
and the displacement of this y, uh, this wave is considered as y curve. Assume that I have the two waves. I have two waves. One is y1 and another one is y2. Right. See, no need to write in this way. We can write the diagram in another way also. So, so wave how to consider that x superpose are the So confuse are the Consider two waves in this way. So superposition principle you have uh, discussed in your classes in your uh, first views, right? So you are just going to write the waves. I am just going to write the waves here. Yes. This is first wave and this is second wave. The displacement of the wave first wave is y1 and the displacement of the second wave is y2. As in that, the displacement of the first wave is y1 and the displacement of the second wave is y2. My dear students, this is a crust, this is a trough, this is a crust and this is a trough. Now, these two waves are going to superpose. It means they are going to mix when they superpose. Crust of the first wave falls on the crust of second wave. Trough of the second wave, first wave falls on the crust of trough of the second wave. In a third, crust of one falls on crust of two. Trough of one falls on trough of two. One remain on the other. Superpose after So they are going to superpose. Then what happens to this resultant? See here, you can observe the resultant. The resultant will be in this way. So again, I am just going to represent x and y. I am not going to conserve any energy and time. So this x and y is to conserve manually. So crust falls on the crust and trough falls on the trough. See here in another that you can observe that in actually amplitude increase I do. You can observe that there is an increase in the amplitude. When crest of first wave falls on the crest of other wave and the trough of one wave falls on the trough of other wave, there is an increase in the amplitude. It means the displacement of these two superpositions can be written as y1 plus y2. Why? Because here the crust falls on crust, trough falls on trough. In after the displacement add after that. So I can say that, I can say that the y1 and y2 is going to add up to give you the resultant displacement. So y gives you y1 plus y2. So you are going to explain that to me. I should give you the clear clear picture about the, the, uh, the statement of superposition principle. So not only this, even my students, this is called as constructive superposition or even this is called as constructive interference. So interference na explain one way other than the other. So now there is no need to explain that. Now my students are going to consider other two ways. So I'm going to consider other two waves with x-axis origin and y-axis. Your crest, rough, rough, crest. See, in this case what happens? See here again I'm going to write y1 is a displacement of the first wave and y2 is a displacement of second wave. y1 is a displacement of first wave and y2 is a displacement of second wave. What happens in this case? Crest of one wave falls on trough of other wave and the trough of first wave falls on the crest of other wave. What happens here? Here you can observe that. Here you can observe that the destructive interference takes place. Here the destructive interference takes place. It means nothing is present. If crest of one wave falls on the trough of other wave, or the trough of one way falls on the crest of other way so that the according to superposition principle what happens if I am going to add the displacement of these two things here it becomes y1 minus y2 which becomes equal to 0 here you will not get any displacement so my dear students here you will not get any displacement so here you will not get any displacement so this is y1 because crest becomes plus y and trough becomes minus y. So one, when one, one, uh, one crust falls on another trough, it becomes zero displacement. So then what is the statement of superposition principle? My dear students, superposition principle states that, states that, see, when one or more waves 
or moving with some displacement say y1 and y2 then the superposition of these two waves gives the resultant displacement which is equal to the vector sum of individual displacement andre nan hatra tumba waves ida aa ella waves ku displacement inda y1 y2 y3 so on and so on so ee ella waves enadru superpose aadre avugala result ant avaru aa ella waves ku mix aadre resultant displacement enagirutte andre resultant displacement na y inda barithini adu yav tara barithide andre sum of all these displacements anta barithide last so this is a representation of superposition principle take down the heading superposition principle of waves first one and the statement and the work body statement when two or more waves are superposed comma and they combine all the time one time one superpose agutte the resultant displacement at the point of superposition is equal to the vector sum of displacements of all the waves first one now write this formula y is equal to y1 plus y2 plus y3 plus so on gotta get this fact yarada waves combine aagide andre idra displacement to idra displacement to combine madana 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 madidivi resultant displacement anta karithivi anta helade eno superposition principle then another one thing you should know that is what there is a relationship that is what the intensity i is always directly proportional to the square of the amplitude this you have studied in your first pc also ee relation nu kuda you note down maarkobeku note down that note anta hakkondu note anta hakkondu the intensity of a wave uh, intensity of a wave is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude of the wave yes so what is intensity my dear students and the intensity and i know notally you just put as i is directly proportional to a square so what is mean by the intensity hope you know that intensity is the energy of a wave so while actually the wave you are just exactly discussing about the waves when the wave is moving so you know that wave carries energy from one point to another point so we, we can say that it is a energy you can write it down it is a wave energy which is which is passing normally across unit area in one second so intensity is simply said to be the energy intensity na enta karithive it is said to be the energy so my dear students now i am just moving towards the discussion of the interference so what is this interference so just now i said you that superposition of waves here you have observed that one wave falls on another wave here also you have observed that one wave falls on another wave in similarly similarly we can we can move towards the discussion of we can move towards the discussion of interference of waves so what is interference it is the phenomenon of superposition of one or more like waves so that is said to be the that is said to be the interference that is a very simple just uh, simple definition for interference even i can just explain you that with a simple definition another simple definition which is very peculiar so my dear students my dear students interference of light so in this interference of light you will definitely get a question on the theory of interference or to describe the experiment of the interference interference it is the phenomenon of it is the phenomenon of phenomenon of redistribution of energy superposition of superposition of 
to our bone base. Yes, my dear students, you can observe it here. Yeah? It is a phenomenon of redistribution of energy due to the superposition of two or more waves. So, what is this exactly? Defines you. You are getting a closer back. Observe, my dear students, one wave, another wave, wave, and then superpose are there. So, you observe, my dear students. So, this wave is having its own amplitude. This wave is having its own intensity. This wave is having its own energy. Similarly, this wave is also having its own energy. When the one wave falls on the other wave, when the one wave falls on the other wave, what happens? We can observe that the energy is redistributed. Why? Because of the superposition. In other words, when the superpose are there, the energy of the energy is redistributed. It redistributes out of that. So the energy of this wave moves to this, the energy of this wave moves to this. Whereas finally we will get the resultant wave which is equal to y is equal to y1 plus y2. At my interference, the tumba simple I have to write here, it is a phenomenon of superposition of two or more light waves. So take down this definition. It is a phenomenon of redistribution of energy due to the superposition of two or more light waves to our more light waves. So this interference pattern exactly gives you the wave-like nature of light. It exactly discusses about the wave-like nature of light. Because the reflection and the refraction, they exactly deal with the wave-like nature of light. But this wave, this, uh, this concept exactly deals with the concept, exactly deals with the superposition of two or more waves. Exactly deals with the superposition of two or more waves, more light waves, in which this pattern exactly gives you the light behaves as waves, how the light is going to behave as a wave-like nature. So, my dear students, now let us move on towards the discussion of types of interference pattern. In this, we have two types: one is constructive interference, and another one is destructive interference. Interference pattern is that one wave is more than the other wave. The fall is that. I mean, more than that, the resultant wave is that. So that is said to be the interference pattern. Now I am just moving towards constructive interference, and next one is destructive interference. My dear students, constructive interference. What is this constructive interference? Observe carefully. When one current first of one wave superimposed with the first of another wave. You can observe that there is an increase in magnitude. Sorry, there is an increase in the magnitude of amplitude. There is increase in the amplitude, so that the phenomenon of superposition of the crust of one wave on the crust of other wave, or the trough of one wave with the trough of another wave, is said to be the constructive interference. Then, what about the destructive? Destructive. So destructive. Destructive interference. When trough of one wave falls on the crust of other wave, crust of other wave, right? Other otherwise the crust of one wave falls on the trough of other wave, then it gives it gives zero displacement. That is said to be the destructive interference. So that take down that constructive interference. Take down the sentence also. When crust of one wave falls on the crust of another wave, or a trough falls on the trough. Of other, come up the displacements. Their displacements get added, called as constructive interference. Yes, my dear students, you can also carefully constructive interference. That like crust crust will fall off. Like trough trough will fall off. Another thing, another thing. In other words, constructive interference. Another thing, displacement. In other two, add up the displacement. In other two, add up all of that. Also, you can observe that there is an increase in amplitude. Amplitude in other that increase of the original amplitude. Really, the amplitude is a one. Here the amplitude is a two. But here the amplitude is increased, right? A one plus a two. So the amplitude in other two increase of the amplitude increase of that. You know that intensity is directly proportional to the square of the amplitude. If amplitude increases, energy should increase. That is intensity also should increase. Take on the next point. 
the intensity of the resultant wave is maximum the intensity of the resultant wave is maximum full stop yes next goes with go by destructive interference dear students if you want to write this diagram you can write it for your reference but this is not for your examination if you want for your reference you can take down this right so let's take down the heading destructive interference it is the phenomenon of superposition of the crest of one wave with the trough of other wave or a trough of one wave what the crest of other wave gives you gives gives you and the very just right gives destructive interference full stop in the next point <coughs> the displacements of the two waves get subtracted in the next point the intensity is minimum so you can observe that are the millennial waves but that so i can i may not write it for you my dear students you can write it for your reference also this is a dispersed wave with a displacement y1 and this is a second wave with a displacement y2 rest drop drop rest here when the superpose so you will get y is equal to y1 minus y2 which is equal to 0 right y and x nothing you will get right right so i can say that you will get the zero displacement at the bar their displacement is equal to get subtracted see it means you may get the wave which is very very small otherwise you may get the wave which is very very small actually will not that much wave also because they are not the crust force or crust on that we are going to minus with each other plus or minus always we are going to minus with each other so you can write this diagram also for your reference so I will write the first point of their displacement of that subtracted that is y1 minus y2 and is zero in the vortex indicates the intensity is minimum because the amplitude is very very less here so we can say that the intensity is very very less because we must have to so we have not written here so we can say that the intensity is minimum this is about constructive interference and destructive interference now we can even move towards the discussion of the interference pattern so what how the interference experiments takes place how the bands are going to form on the screen now let us move at that. So this is an important question for you, my dear students. Now what I am discussing that, so that is an important question for you, right? I am not going to discuss by that. So to discuss that, I want to move it. Only one, very two simple definitions again. Because you know, we are source to use marketing. So the cat can get for the definition we go. That is what coherent source and incoherent source. You can take down this two also in your notebook. So, coherent sources and incoherent sources. What is, what is the example? So, what is the definition for coherent sources and incoherent sources? See, my dear students, if I am using one single source, there doesn't come a question of coherent sources and there doesn't come a question of incoherent sources. But obviously, when we come towards the discussion of the consideration of two different sources, there exists a question of coherent sources and also incoherent sources. Then, my dear students, what is said to be the coherent sources? My dear students, observe that if I have one source, it is having its own phase, it is having its own energy, it is having its own wavelength. See, suppose if I consider that the source S1 and the source S2, assume that this source is going to produce a wave which is having an amplitude A, intensity I, wavelength lambda and phase, right? Similarly, I am going to consider another one wave. So, whereas this wave is also uh, having its own amplitude, intensity, wavelength and lambda. So, when separately consider one another, S1 can bear the amplitude, energy, intensity, wavelength, frequency, phase, etc. Like Similarly, the source S2 is also having its own amplitude, intensity, wavelength, and phase. But here we are considering the two sources. 
when the source S1 and S2 both are considered together, set again consider Margaga, when these two sources are said to be coherent, when these two sources are said to be incoherent, and we will define Margaga, when these two sources produces a wave of same wavelength and same phase said to be the coherent sphere, coherent sources if the two sources produces a base light base of same wavelength and same phase difference same phase or constant phase it is said to be the coherent sources so it is said to be the coherent sources then what is said to be incoherent if these two sources are not producing the waves of same wavelength it means if they are going to produce a waves of different wavelength and of different phase then it is said to be the incoherent source you can observe that the distance between the two crest of the trough is called as wavelength here the wavelength of source S1 and the wavelength of source S2 both are same. Similarly, initial phase for both is 0. Next, you can observe that at each and every point, the phase is also same. If the source S1 is having a phase pi, here it is also having a uh, phase pi. Here if it is here 2 pi, here it is also 2 pi. It means the phase difference is 0 between these two sources. That is what both the waves are having same wavelength and both the sources producing a waves of same wavelength and same phase. So it is said to be the coherent sources. It is said to be the coherent source. Suppose if I consider other two waves. So I am just going to write other two waves also. So let us say source S1. So I am just going to write another wave which is said to be the source S2. So it is going to produce U. My dear students, we can observe that, we can observe that the phase is also different, the wavelength is also different, the wavelength is also different. So why because you can observe that, you can observe that the distance between the two crests, here is lambda, the distance between the two crests is lambda. The lambda is also different. Why? Because here the crest node, E point the line crest start on that. Here different point the crest start on that. Here here indicate my that I do. Here do pura wavelength same da. Right? So you mean here are end are there. So you mean one wave end are there. You mean end are there wave only that crest to E. So distance between the two crest and distance between the two crest is said to be the wavelength. Ha da the here wavelength end are there. Different to that, a stella, it is initial phase angle 0 in red. Immediately initial phase angle is to that. So, my dear students, you should be very careful. So, you in the wave start angle to get that. So, in other words, it is 3 pi by 2. So, my dear students, it is having a different phases as well as it is having different wavelength. If those waves are the other sources which are producing a waves of different, so different wavelength and different. Phases it is said to be incoherent sources. Yes, is no problem. Now let us take the definition of both two things. So I'll take the idea incoherent sources. If the two sources of light which emits the light of waves of different wavelength and different phase. Full so stop. Next sub adding. Coherent sources. If the sources of light produce emits the light waves of same wavelength and same phase difference. Is called as coherent sources. Now take down the next adding. Ends double slit experiment. Ends double slit experiment. See in your examination, definitely you may get the question on this. That is what describe Ends double slit experiment. I describe Ends double slit experiment to to demonstrate interference of light. So now let us move towards Ends double slit experiment. Okay. 
Now, in stochastic experiment discussed now, I am just going to consider first slit. My dear students, consider that we have a source here. Source is producing a rays of light. So, I am just going to place, I am just going to place a cardboard in front of this. To get a narrow beam of light from the source, I am going to make one single slit. My dear students, in front of the single slit, again I am going to place, again I am going to place another one cardboard which is having two slits. So let us call this as S and this one as S1 and S2. S1 and S2 acts as two slits, two coherent sources. These two slits, S1 and S2, acts as a coherent sources. It means they are going to produce a waves, light waves of same wavelength and same phase difference. Now, in front of this, I am going to place, in front of this, I am going to place a screen, right? I am going to place a screen in front of this. I am going to place a screen. Yes? Which forms a band. So, you can arrange the matter for this time. Next class, in the clear I will explain it. Two coherent sources were of double sleep. Right. But the information I will cut under the Bright band, dark band. So it's still a book on the So next the class will I will discuss you regarding the this experiment. In soon experiment as it appears that are related to the formation of this. So then I'm a clear I mean a red diagram so that we close by two. Next class is a red diagram number two close by two. So I will explain to you clearly, right? Okay. Thank you, dear students.